Hi, this is Allison Gunther with Parents for Educational Freedom in North Carolina. Thank you to Fayetteville Academy for hosting us today. Choosing the right school can be intimidating. What should you be looking for? What questions should you ask? Every child learns differently, and we want to help take the guesswork out of your school search. While the information in this video can be applied to choosing any school, traditional, public charter, or private school, most of it applies to choosing a private school. We hope this guide will help you in gathering the information you need to choose a school that is the right fit for your child. First, let's talk about the approach to your search. You're most likely going to start your search based on location. Is it more convenient to look at options near your home or your workplace? What are the logistics of dropping off and picking up siblings who attend different schools in different locations? It's important to think about the distance and route you'll take to drop off and pick up your child each day, particularly if transportation is not provided. You can get started at ncschoolsaroundme.com, plug in your address, and look at the school options in proximity to your location. When you've narrowed down the area of your search, be prepared to call the school to set up a tour or a visit so that you can learn more about what they offer. You can learn a lot about a school with a simple phone call, a visit to the school website, or even by word of mouth, but nothing compares to experiencing the school yourself. You can get a feel for the environment, observe the hallways during class change, or visit the cafeteria during lunch. When you walk the halls, you can see how work is displayed, how teachers interact with students, and get a sense for what it would feel like for your child to be among the fellow students. There are five areas of the school you'll want to focus on. The school profile, academics, extracurricular activities, student and family life, and the admissions process. First, the school profile. The first question to ask is, what is your school philosophy or vision? Make sure that the school's mission is consistent with your own educational beliefs and values. How is that philosophy and vision put into practice and translated into teaching, learning, curriculum, and student life? Second question to ask is, how is your school operated and governed? Private schools are not subject to your county school board oversight, but there should be some type of governance structure in place. That could look like leadership by school directors, owner operators, or boards of directors. Ask about the leadership hierarchy and who is responsible for making which decisions. On the financial side, is the school a nonprofit or a for-profit entity? Some, but not all, schools are accredited by accrediting agencies, and it would be good to know if your schools of interest maintain accreditation. The second area of focus should be academics. The two easiest questions to dig into this are, what curriculum do you use and what academic programs do you offer? Unless you're an educator, you may not glean a lot of information by the answer to the curriculum question. However, this can guide you into asking about their approach to implementing the curriculum. It should align with your child's learning needs and style. Private schools can offer enrichment courses that others may not, like sports medicine, Mandarin as a foreign language option, or Bible and faith-based schools. They may also be restricted on courses because of limited staff or resources. Knowing the academic programs offered can help you better understand if the school can meet your child's needs and align with your desires for him or her. Third question to ask, what are your class sizes and student-teacher ratios? Private schools don't have mandated class sizes, but schools often have their own philosophy on class size and student-teacher ratios. Class size takes into consideration the number of students assigned to a class, while the student-teacher ratio is the number of instructional staff divided by the number of students. Keeping an eye on the student-teacher ratio can help you understand what level of attention your student may receive in class. Next, what are your teacher's qualifications and what professional development opportunities are available to them? Private schools are not required to hire certified teachers, but many do. In some cases, private school teachers may have had a career in a specific field of study and have now chosen to teach it. Find out about the training and credentials of a school's teachers, as teaching is a major factor in the quality of education your child will receive. Understanding the professional development opportunities helps you grasp a school's commitment to supporting the success and growth of its teachers. Another question to ask is, how do you integrate technology into the classroom and curriculum? Modern day technology is becoming the norm in education, both in delivery like classrooms with laptop computers, interactive whiteboards or e-readers, but also through optional or required courses in tech-based subjects like computer programming or graphic design. You may hear about what technological resources the school has, but be sure to ask how they are used to enhance learning. 
It's also important for you to know how do you measure individual achievement and progress. Private schools are not required to give the state EOG test, but they are required to administer a standardized test. A nationally normed test allows a school to measure their students' scores against other students around the nation. While this is important, you should also ask about the school's approach to measuring student progress throughout the year, so you'll know how your child is doing all year long. Last but not least, a very important question to ask if your child has disabilities, how do you address students with disabilities? Private schools are not required to provide the same level of services or supports as the local public school system. Your child's 504 plan or IEP will not simply transfer to the private school. That does not mean the private school cannot and will not provide the level of services or supports your child needs, but you need to be very specific about what your child needs and understand if the school can meet those needs adequately. The next areas to ask about are extracurriculars and student life. Most private schools offer a wide range of extracurricular activities, but it's important to ask what those are. Ideally, a school will offer extracurriculars that meet your child's interests and needs. Consider which your child can sign up for, such as a science program or Spanish club, and which require a specific condition for participating, such as trying out for the soccer team. The culture of student and family life at a school is incredibly important to consider. What is student life like? You want your child to be happy, productive, and engaged at school while developing and maintaining strong friendships and peer relationships. What is the school like for students socially, emotionally, and intellectually? This is a good opportunity for you to share about your child's experience, the good and the bad, about their previous school. A great question to ask the school is, what type of student are you looking for? You and the school want to make sure there's a good fit. Some schools may target certain types of students, like those who have specific academic focuses. They may prefer students who are socially aware, well-rounded, independent, ambitious, or actively involved in student and community life. This will help you decide whether your child is likely a good fit. You're obviously an active and involved parent. This is a great time to ask how parents can get involved in school life. Can you volunteer in class or serve on parent committees and school boards? Kids learn best when their parents are involved in their education, so find out how a school welcomes you into their community. Lastly, you'll want to ask about the admissions process and payment structure. The question to ask is, how much is your tuition and what does it include? The school should provide a tuition and fee schedule for you and it's important that you take note of the total cost to attend the school. There may be costs that are not included that you should take into consideration as well. These are things like school uniforms, textbooks, food, extracurricular activities, field trips, and athletic fees. There are often application or registration fees. Does the total cost of the school fit within your household budget? Be sure to ask if the school offers financial aid. Of course, the Opportunity Scholarship is open to all families and could cover some of the cost of tuition and fees if your family is awarded. The ESA Plus program for students with disabilities could also help cover the cost of tuition and fees, but also related services like educational technology or educational therapies. Now is the time to find out the key deadlines and requirements for admissions. Where can you find the application and when do you need to apply? You need to understand if there is additional paperwork required of you, like a pastor recommendation if you're interested in applying to a faith-based school, or the report card transcript from your public school if you're making the move from public to private. Your family may also need to prepare for a family interview, and your child may need to participate in an assessment. We've given you a lot of information, and we hope it's been helpful in your school search. As a parent, you know your child best. You're his or her greatest advocate, no one cares about them more than you. We hope you find a school that is their best fit. To learn more how our team can help you, visit our website at pefnc.org. We wish your family the best of luck this school year.